Okay, we're live. Okay. All right, that's fine. Okay. All right. So, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Ask the Pediatrician Hour. So, we're live on Facebook and Instagram, and, and I think on Fresh Waves Radio. So if you can hear us, let us know you can hear us. I'm here with Esther. Uh, Esther, do you want to say hi to everyone? Yeah. There we are. And you're welcome. And this is um, Ask the Presentation Hour on Fresh Wage Radio. And thank you for joining us. It's good to have you again, Dr. Gomisola. Happy New Year. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. How this needs, uh, because we're using two different systems at the same time. So, apologies for a little bit of echoing in the background, but hopefully, it won't be that bad. <laughs> you can see here. So, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. So, whichever platform you're watching from, uh, I want to wish you a very happy 2023. I think it's my first time of going live in 2023. So I, I think it's awesome to be back after having our long break. So welcome everyone to ATP Hour. Um, feel free to drop your questions. So today is just going to be Q&A, so no particular topic. But please drop your questions and then we'll be able to answer them. Uh, so if you can drop it on Instagram, if you're watching us on Instagram, or if you're watching us on Facebook, you can also drop your questions, whether it's Fresh Waves Radio or Ask the Pediatrician Foundation Facebook page, you are welcome to drop your questions, and we will try and answer them in the next one hour or so. And feel free to share the video, invite friends, family, everyone to join us. So thank you so much, everyone. You're welcome. I can see one person is already with us. Okay, you know. okay, yeah. Happy New Year, uh, Mrs. Adewali Adela. You're welcome. So while we're waiting for people to start dropping their questions, we're just going to share the videos and make sure everybody can see us and hear us. So I'm going to do that as well. Thank you so much also, Keaton and um, Kainde and Busola, all those people are joining us on Instagram. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, I'm just going to share the video on our Facebook pages so that people can see us. Okay. 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 Just some um, echoing from Instagram, and <laughs> I don't know what we can do to reduce that one. I think I think um it's notification. Maybe the site is not muted or something. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know how to what we do to that. What we do to that. Okay. 
Okay, we'll manage it. Okay, I think it's better. Okay, so I think I've shared the videos to everybody. Um, Joy, James, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning and Happy New Year to you too. Yes, thank you. Yes. Joy is asking, can we start sending our questions? Yes, please. Go ahead, go ahead. And yeah, we can start having the questions. Okay, okay. Um, is, is it possible to miss your own mic on Instagram as well? Just check. I can see. There should be a mic icon in front. Yeah. Exactly. Once you miss your mic on Instagram, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's better. Yeah, I think it's better. Just to highlight right on Instagram. On Instagram. I can hear you from my phone. Mm, okay, so I think that's the best option. Yeah, so Instagram people drop your questions. And Facebook, drop your questions as well. All right, I think that's better. The echoing is better. Yeah, so start sending in your question. And I think we have a question. So Esther, do you want to read that for us? Yeah, OK. Um, this is Adewale Adiola. And um, she's saying, please, ma'am, my question is just like a confirmation of my understanding of exclusive breastfeeding. My baby will be six months on August 3. So I intend starting complimentary feeding on August 4. I hope this is correct, ma. Secondly, please, ma. I, am I to give her water first or baby cereal? So that's the question, ma. All right. Thank, All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much for ready for us thank you so much uh, Dewale. happy new year and thank you so much for doing exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months that is what we recommend so kudos to you for doing that and i'm sure your baby and yourself have enjoyed that experience so yes you are supposed to start your complimentary feeding on the day your baby clock six months so we, you can start actually on the 3rd of august it's okay. If you even want to start on the 4th of August, it's also fine. So that is okay. So I, I hope you know that when you start complimentary feeding, it does not mean that you are going to stop uh, breastfeeding your baby. You are still going to keep breastfeeding just the same way you've been breastfeeding now. You're only now going to start giving complimentary food. And now complimentary food is not just giving the baby water and complimentary food is not giving the baby um cereal per se okay so i really would recommend that before you start luckily for you your baby is still going to be you see um did you say august 3 is that i mean that does that sound like an error because um we're in january so, and I'm sure that even if your baby is born today, your baby will be six months in January, I mean, by June. So I'm, I'm trying to, I'm wondering whether you are making an error in terms of the date. So just confirm that to me very quickly uh, so, so that we're sure of that. So, um, so let's, uh, so to start complimentary feeding, I'm going to recommend that you go through 
sorry something happened to my instagram video okay it's back sorry about that um so to start complimentary feeding you need to first of all go through our uh i would recommend you watch our videos on and training on complementary feeding first. It's very, very important to understand what complementary feeding is, what are the food to give, and how to go about complementary feeding. Because complementary feeding is not just cereal feeding. Complementary feeding is not just cereal and water and milk. So it is so important that we you get that um, understanding and perception first. So because already I can see that your mindset is just because of the common thing, uh, then, okay, you've already corrected yourself that you mean February. Okay, I was I was, <laughs> I was initially worried that, how can your baby be six months in August? Even if your baby was born today or January 1st, your baby will be definitely will be uh, six months by June. So thank you for correcting. You meant February. Okay, so maybe your baby was born in August. So your baby is not going to be February, your baby will be six months. Okay, so um, yes, yeah, so you can start on, on February 3rd, but before you do that, so thank God we still have a month for you to go through all our teachings on complementary feeding. We have lots of lovely videos on our Facebook group. So if you go to our Facebook group, uh, under the menu icon, just go to guides. So the, the guides, we have guide one, which is on breastfeeding, then guide two is on infants, uh, feeding on nutrition, which is about complementary feeding. So if you go through it, we have about five or six videos there, which I really, really recommend that you should watch first. So for the rest of this month, you can watch that while you are preparing yourself for complementary feeding. Because complementary feeding is a whole big topic on its own, which if we start talking, that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm sure there are many other people that have questions to ask us. So I will let you go and watch those videos. Just to summarize, to say that when you're starting complementary feeding, your baby is going to eat variety of food, not only cereal. And of course, when you're starting it, you're going to start it gradually. And you're going to start first. You know, uh, usually we say even for the first meal, it could just be two or three spoons. And usually if those first months when you're just starting just twice a day so you're still going to breastfeed a lot more, uh, the same way you're breastfeeding now you are only going to start adding the complementary food and the complementary food can be any food but we we have uh, what we call um the different classes of food so we have the what we call the energy giving food carbohydrates we have the bodybuilding for the proteins we have the uh fats and oil we have the fruit we have the veggies we have uh, and of course, your water, your dairy, and all that. So when you're giving food, we want you to mix them. But we don't want you to give only one particular class of food. So and then, but when you're starting complementary food again for the first day, each time you're starting a new food, you need to have test it that your baby is not going to react to them because some babies have what we call food allergies. So you're not going to start and rush the baby through all this. So there are a little bit of some. Uh, understanding here and there. So it's not as simple as just going to the market, buying one particular cereal, and then you quickly, and then that's what you're going to give, and then you start a commentary. No. So of course, usually most people will start with cereal first, something like pap or any of the cereal rice uh, or maize, you know, some any of them. But the most important thing is to understand that principles that are going behind it. So it is not just going to just be cereal alone. And then, of course, you are not going to stop breastfeeding. I really like to emphasize that because I don't want mothers to think when you start complementary feeding, then you stop breastfeeding and then you go on. So, so even when you're maybe clock six months, nothing is going to change in terms of the breastfeeding. Keep breastfeeding as much as possible, then you're not going to hard the complement food. And the complement food, you start with the quantity you start with matters, the, what kind of food you put together matters, and then how you increase it matters. So that is why I think it's very important that you go through all those um, complementary feeding videos that have been made by Global Heads Media. It's also available on YouTube. It's very simple, and they try to do those videos five, seven minutes, most of them, and you can understand them and decide with from six months to one year, from one year to two years. So it's, it's very clear. So I think that's what you should do now. And then by the time you're ready to start in February, you'll be good to go. All right. So I hope that's helped. All right. Let's move on to the next question. question. All right. Thank you very much, doctor. Then we have this from John Ime James. 
saying, please, ma'am, my daughter is a year and four months. I treated malaria last December. This morning, she woke up and I gave her a water and she was playing. But the next moment, she started vomiting. She vomited twice, but no fever. I don't know what it might be. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Joy, uh, James, uh, for that question. Um, so the one thing I, will, I want to encourage us to, do, to stop doing this year is treating malaria when our children have not been formally confirmed to have malaria. So if you have not, if your child is not having fever and other symptoms of malaria and you have not taken a child to the hospital, the doctors have not done the blood tests and confirmed malaria, let's stop treating malaria. I know, yes, I agree malaria is one of the most common symptom or most common illness that we have in Nigeria especially, but that does not mean every symptom or every illness is malaria okay because again like the assumption is that the fact that a child is vomiting does not necessarily mean the child has malaria okay so let's not make those assumptions in 2023 so there are many reasons why a child could be vomiting all right so um a yes four months old just woke up in the morning um I don't know what, when the child had the last meal, what the last meal was. Uh, so um, what was the breakfast? And is it just only water this child is taking? I mean, because you just said she woke up, you gave her water and she was playing and then she said, well, missing. So the question is, apart from the water, did she take any other meal? What was what was the situation? So, but anyway, the first thing when the child vomits is not to start panicking and all that. Just let the child be first and see whether the vomiting is going to happen again. It could just be that the water you give irritated the child, or it could just be that the um, the child maybe had indigestion. I don't know when the child had the last meal and all that, you know. So just watch first. It is only if the vomiting keeps reoccurring, like if the child vomits. Okay, say she has vomited twice, okay? Um, so you need to monitor. The question now will be, Excuse me, what did the child vomit actually? What is in the vomiting? Is it, is it the water or is it left food from last night that was not digested or things like that? But that would be suggesting <coughs> indigestion or, or something like that. So then any diarrhea with it or, you know, just the vomiting alone. So just wash the child now. You can make your whole rice ready. You can also give all arrest. It's not only for diarrhea, you can do arrest for vomiting because the most important thing is to rehydrate whoever is vomiting, uh, uh, losing fluid, unless the child keeps vomiting. So if the child keeps vomiting, then we have to take the child to the hospital because we need to know why is the child vomiting. And that is what's going to help us to, um, you know, um, uh, know what to do about it. It does not necessarily mean it is malaria. So don't... Uh, don't be worried because you say you already treated malaria last December. That does not mean, number one, it doesn't mean that the fact that the, what you treated in December was even malaria because you didn't tell us why or who recommended the treatment. Or it does not also mean that the child currently has malaria. So just watch. If the vomiting keeps coming up, you have to take the child to the hospital and the doctors will do their own necessary evaluation and then you'll be able to see the cause of the vomiting. Most children vomit, the most common cause will be maybe indigestion, but it could also be the first symptom in many, many uh, illnesses. So it's difficult to say which one it is just by the vomiting alone until we've done a proper evaluation. But the most important thing for you to do now is just let the child be and just try and give a little sip of ORS if the child is able to tolerate it so that the child can at least get rehydrated. That's all we can do for the meantime. But if the vomiting persists, then that is when you have to take the child to the hospital. All right, I hope that's helpful uh, for Joy. I can't see any question on Instagram. I hope it's not that I missed it out. Uh, Instagram people ask a question. Dubai Jafumi, good morning, happy new year. Thank you for joining us. So if you are listening on Instagram, please drop your questions. We will take your questions as well. All right, let's move on for our Facebook family. All right, um, this is Bint Ahmad. Um, good morning, doctor. Please, can I give a nine-month cold food? And it's 7.8 kg food normal for nine months. 
That's the question. Okay. I guess what you mean by 7.8 is the weight, not the, I mean, I guess yeah. that's the answer to me. All right. So, um, it's better to give your children freshly prepared food. So freshly prepared food mostly will be odds or warm. So that is fine. Um, so if you say cold food, I really need to know what food you are referring to. So sometimes, like for example, if you make fruits and maybe you put it in the fridge or like smoothies or yogurt, most of those ones are usually cold. So there's nothing wrong with giving the cold food. The problem is not the cold food per se. So the problem is for us to know what kind of food you are giving. So for example, I won't expect you to want to give the child like say rice, for example, or yam, and then you just take it cold from the fridge <coughs> and give it to the child. No, that would not be appropriate. So for this kind of food, we expect it to be freshly prepared, preferably, and if at all it's leftovers, you have to still warm them. But if you're giving food that are naturally cold, like your yogurts or something like uh, smoothies that you've made and kept in the fridge, that is fine. Nothing will happen to the child if you give cold food. All right. And I guess you meant 7.8 kilos. Yeah, asking whether the weight is appropriate. So when we are answering questions about weight, we always like to know the baseline. We want to know what was your baby's birth weight. Um, for example, if your baby was born pre term one kilo, I mean, it would be wrong for us to assume that that child weighing 7.8 kilos at nine months is wrong. <clears throat> Excuse me, but if your baby was weighing three kilos at birth, for example, I would expect your nine months to be closer to nine kilos by now. So, but 7.8 is not so bad, but <clears throat> it is definitely can be better. And then the question is how much of food is child eating? You know, how are you feeding a child? Complimentary feeding, again, we will recommend you go through all our teachings, videos on complimentary feeding. Make sure you're feeding a child appropriately. Those 7.8 kg is not going to worry me as a pediatrician, but it's already towards the lower end of what we call the normal. So I really want to see how we can make sure it doesn't get worse. We want it to get better and better. So uh, just look at what the child is eating. I hope you're still breastfeeding and I hope you're giving a child at least three to four meals a day, at least one, I mean, three meals a day, at least one to two snacks a day. And the food is not just cereal and milk. Okay. The child is taking variety of food. So again, I recommend you watch all our videos on complimentary feeding. All right. I think, um, okay. Okay. So this question was, James was giving me an update. Joy, James was giving us an update on the child, the malaria in uh, December. Okay. That's lovely. Thank you so much for making sure she was tested and treated in the hospital. So, so a doctor already knows your child and now the child is vomiting and this was just December. So a couple of, um, weeks i guess ago or days perhaps so you may want to go back to the hospital but don't just assume the vomiting is malaria you just go back to the hospital first and let the doctor have a look at her again if she keeps vomiting all right so that was just an update on previous question all right there's a question on instagram i, I think i'll just take that one before we continue with facebook um I think I'll read it, Esther, because of the echo if you put on your Instagram mic. Um, say good morning, ma'am. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, so Ude. Uh, shall say, yes. Uh, my baby has rashes around the mouth and the jaw, and it will be six weeks old, okay? So if a, if a newborn baby has rashes, uh, six weeks old is... Well, technically, still more or less a newborn. Uh, we we'll need to see those rashes first. That's the most important thing. We always need to see rashes so that we can know what kind of rashes babies have. And you say it's on the jaw, on the mouth. That's a very unusual area for newborn babies to have rashes, to be honest. So, how are you feeding this baby? Is your baby on breast, exclusive breastfeeding? which is what we expect for your six weeks old. So let's make sure we're doing that. But if your baby is taking any other thing more than breast milk, um, we need to be sure the child is not reacting to them. And you can also make sure you just see your pediatrician, let them have a look at those rashes first. And that will help us to know what is the cause of the rash. The cause of the rash will determine the 
approach. So some rashes in newborn babies, especially if it's happening on the face, the forehead, there are normal rashes. Um, like so we have some babies can have rich rashes, some people can have uh, what we call milia that looks like uh, white dots, dots all over their face. Usually we don't do anything about those kind of rashes, but there are rashes that are due to maybe infections and all that, those ones we, we have to treat the child with antibiotics. So we cannot treat a rash without knowing the cost of the rashes. So, and I'm saying this at the beginning of 2023 because I want us to stop and I don't want you to listen to all the experienced mothers that want to tell them your baby has rashes, then they recommend a particular product and as if that product is a fix it all is a cure is all for any kind of rashes that is the most um oh, i don't want which one will i use <laughs> that is a very costly on wrong assumptions ever you know and i don't care how much of advertisement people will make those products make for you there is no single product that can address any or all kind of rashes so you cannot just once a child has a rash you cannot just go grab that product and say because mothers will ask questions like and my baby has rashes and i've used this product and the rashes are not gonna see why has it not gone because i've used that product and i'm always like why will it go because ah, are you sure that rash is something that will respond to the products you are using so i want us to fall for like that habits die with 2022 if your child has rashes the best thing is do nothing until you know what is causing the rash and then the doctors or the professionals can advise on what to do sometimes it's maybe do nothing some rashes are going to come by themselves and they're going to go by themselves for example most uh, fevers come with what we call the uh, viral uh exantem. so fever uh, rashes that are due to viral infection for example they don't need any treatment they're going to go by themselves but there are rashes that are due to fungal infection bacterial infection those are going to require other treatments and there are rashes that are due to what we are using maybe the product we're using on the baby that all we just need to do is to stop using those products and the rashes will go away so this year let's be very careful let's not just use anything until we're really sure of the rash and the cost of the rashes all right okay i think instagram people have woken up so let's answer more instagram questions before we come back to facebook people um the next question is from um lade me cosmetics good morning doc happy holidays can i have a drop of eucalyptus oil in a bit of water in the mixing chamber when nebulizing when using the nebulizer to clear the block nose of a two months old and a toddler of a two-year-old. Okay, so um, eucalyptus oil, uh, aka silver bed, or oh, very popular in Nigeria. All right, so um, <clears throat> you don't need to put eucalyptus oil when you are nebulizer. If you have a nebulizer, then you don't need to put any oil inside. Uh, if the noses are blocked for a two-month-old, because you seem like you're two months old and you're two year old, all of them have their noses blocked. So the, for you two months old, all we recommend is for you to use uh, saline drops. So saline drops is the most appropriate thing to use. You drop it in the nose, it will soften the mucus and the mucus will flow. It is very important for you to be sure the nose, uh, the nostrils are blocked with mucus because if not, there's really no point to nebulize, there's really no point to use uh, saline drops okay that is number one because the saline drops the essence of the saline drop is to soften the mucus sometimes your babies are breathing as if they are already having runny nose and already having the 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 cata is already coming out it's flowing out of their nose there's no need for any nebulizer there's no need for anything you just need to wipe it away but if the child has like uh, you know you can see the cross of the mucus in the nose and it's not coming out then yes you can use uh, saline drops um you can nebulize as well and it was one thing for them to uh for the uh for the uh what we call the aerosols to enter the nose so that it will again it's the same process it's kind of make it easier for them to breathe so that is all that you need to do there's really um um if your child is not really having um, like uh, what we call bronchiolitis, like they are really struggling to breathe 
or a child who is on the asthmatic uh, 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 end, there's really no need to nebulize them per se. We don't really nebulize for block nose. We nebulize for if they are really struggling to breathe, you know, like bronchiolitis or children who are bronchial asthma, there's really no need for you to use a nebulizer as such. Because nebulizer is more for the breathing, the lower airway, whereas if it is just the upper airway that is blocked, just dropping the saline, um, saline drops, you know, normal saline. You can nebulize them with normal saline as well, since you already have the, ne the nebulizer, but it's still going to be the same process and all that. So for the eucalyptus oil, the way it is, what is used is you put it in like hot water or steam and you put it in one corner. I usually don't like recommending it because the reeks of bones for the babies <laughs> because when you have toddlers you can never be too careful with hot water and we don't want any hot water bonds in 2023 so please if you're going to use it just put it in the hot water that has boiled well so that it's uh i mean like uh as the steam is coming out it comes out with the uh the vapor of the eucalyptus oil and it helps the children to sneeze it helps them to be able to kind of clear their hair away by themselves so you can use it but please don't carry out water up and down <laughs> excuse me don't carry out water up and down in the house just make sure you leave it in one corner and you know let the children be with you so that they don't go you know get themselves uh born with the hot water otherwise it's really not necessary per se all right <clears throat> somebody say where can i find the link to the complimentary feeding very good question. If you go to our Facebook group, Ask the Pediatricians Facebook group, you can't miss it on Facebook. Go to the menu section. There's a guide section. You will see the complimentary feeding uh, guide to his complimentary feeding, and you can watch all the videos. Or secondly, you can go to YouTube <coughs> and look for um, Global Health Media videos. Just type Global Health Media videos. You will see all the videos. It's also available on YouTube. Or number three, you can download an app. They call it uh, Birth and Beyond app. Birth, like B-I-R-T-H and Beyond. If you just type it into Google or I, I uh, what's it called? Apple Play Stores, you can you can get those uh, app. It's free. You can download it and you can watch all those videos in the app. And the app is available in multiple languages, even like Yoruba, Aousa. So it's available for those who don't have, um, <clears throat> those who are not English speaking. So it is in multiple languages. So that is why I, I also recommend the app. They are very lovely videos on breastfeeding, on complementary feeding, on taking care of small babies, even for pregnancy. So they are very lovely global health media videos. They are, they've packaged them together into that app. So you can download the app and also download the videos. You can always watch it on the go. You don't always have to use the internet to watch it. But if you want to watch it on our Facebook group, they are there. If you want to watch it on YouTube, they are there. They are all over the place. So just look for them and you will get them. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Instagram. I think we've answered all the Instagram questions. We can go back uh, to Facebook now. All right, where did we stop? All right, let's go back. <coughs> okay, I think, yeah, well, that's where we stopped. Okay, yeah, okay, we've, answered, we've, we've mentioned this one. All right, okay, so let's go on. Um... Okay, and um, okay. saying thank you for your okay. response, my your lecture strongly encouraged me to go through with the EBF, and I must say, it's been amazing. I will start watching those videos for preparation towards the complimentary feeding. Thank you very much. Lovely. I'm so lovely. happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> okay. Um, John E. May James, she's saying that her last solid food was Cerelac. I'm around 8 p.m., but she had breast. She had breast milk throughout the night. So thanks so much, doctor. I have called her pediatrician. She said 
I should keep monitoring and keep her posted. All right. <coughs> that's good. But I'm that's just curious as to why your one year old is still having Serilac as dinner. I'm not really happy with that. It's okay. So a one year old should be eating what the rest of the family is eating. Okay, so let's correct that in 2023. So a one year old, by one year old, we want them to be on full family diet. So no longer cereals, no longer Cerelac. So, and definitely not for dinner. That's number one. Number two, for the children, let's try make the dinner earlier. Let's aim for between 6 and 7 p.m. So that will give it the opportunity to digest well. Of course, it's okay for the child to take breast milk through the night, which is good. So this is just my own observation, but I'm happy you've contacted the pediatrician and yeah, you're good to go. No worry, it'll be fine. Okay, Happy New Year, Deborah. <coughs> Okay, um, Deborah Rachel, what the police says, my baby is one month old. Plus, can I use selling drops for him because the nose is blocked and vitamin C is not working? <clears throat> okay, number one, vitamin C is not meant to treat cough, catter, and uh, whatever. That is an assumption. I don't know how sometimes I don't know how these. Um, how they all start, whoever is the first person to start that belief system. But there are many things Nigerians believe. Uh, let me not say Nigerians that maybe mothers believe and they are not true. So people believe that once you have cough and catagor and take vitamin C, it's going to cure it. It's not going to cure it. Vitamin C does not cure cough and catagor. Vitamin C is a vitamin. It's not like an antibiotic, antiviral, and all that. So most cough and catagor, the good news is that most cough and catagor are due to viral infections they are due to viruses most of the time we don't treat viruses uh we don't have like we don't give them like if you have a bacterial infection we give you antibacteria antibiotics but most time when we have viruses we usually don't treat them because they tend to run their course and then they will go so they just go on their own you don't need to treat them and then so if you're trying to ask of cancer there's really no need to go and rush into giving them vitamin C, all right? Now, people give vitamin C because the vitamins, we definitely need our vitamins and they kind of strengthen our own immune system to fight. So you are the vitamin C itself is not the direct treatment, but you are using vitamin C to kind of strengthen your own body, uh, our own, uh, what we call the immune system or the our soldiers, the white blood cells, and all those things that fight infection in our body, you're only threatening them to fight and get rid of the infection, which the body will eventually do. That is number one. But for a newborn baby, for a one-month-old baby, the one-month-old baby does not need any vitamin C. What a one-month-old baby needs is breast milk. So let that baby be on exclusive breastfeeding. It is one of the reasons we promote exclusive breastfeeding it protects against respiratory infections. That is number one. Number two, keep people away from the baby who has cough, catar, and cold. Actually, during this period, there's summertime, there's cold, there's dust everywhere. So people have been coming down with a lot of cough and catar and all that. <laughs> So what you need to do is to keep your baby away from them. And I know many people are going to come and visit you as newborn, you know, as a newborn mom. So please, it's okay for the visitors to visit you, but they don't need to visit the baby. So keep the baby away from people who are coughing, having cancer and all that. Keep them away. That's the best way to keep your baby protected. And don't take baby to the kitchen when you're cooking, frying and all that. Keep the baby away from that. So Focus more on the prevention rather than uh, running around and dealing with the um, after effects. So, but if your baby has uh, cover and cut already and the nose, uh, the nose trees are blocked. Again, I'm emphasizing that because sometimes mothers think babies' nose are blocked because of the way they are breathing or the noise they make. It does not necessarily mean there's any mucus blocking the nose. If there's no mucus blocking the nose, then there's really no need for you to use saline. Saline is the only saline is not a magical drug. It is just going to soften that mucus to flow because babies have very tiny noses, very tiny, you know, no, uh, 
uh, airway. So any little block, if, and they cannot breathe through their mouth, they always have to breathe through their nose. We call them obligates nasal breathers. They always have to breathe through their nose. So when their nose are blocked, it is really hard for them. So that is why we want to help them. And they cannot sneeze out like yourself. You know, if something is blocking your own, you sneeze out and then everything will come out. So we give them, uh, that saline drops help to soften the mucus and it makes it a flow house. So that is just the purpose. It's not like a special drug to cure anything, no. It's just to soften the mucus so that it can flow. The recovery or the respiratory infections that we normally call it will clear by itself. So you don't need to worry. So, so Deborah, you can only use it only if your baby has the uh, block nose. Otherwise, there's really no need for you uh, to do that. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Um, I think that's the last question on Facebook, if I can see for now. And I'm not sure whether there's any on Instagram. Okay, I think we've answered those on Instagram. All right. So for those on those who are normally part of you are like when is it coming back? <laughs> so we've been on break for the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh usually towards the end of the year we go on break because we need our volunteers our moderators to relax and enjoy the holidays with their family. So by God's grace, we'll be resuming Monday. So all of you are welcome back on Monday and uh, next week, Monday, 9th of January. ATP will be fully back. So you can ask your questions on our Facebook groups. And of course, you can always join us for a live session like this on Mondays as well um, in the evening by 6 p.m. And of course, it's uh, Fresh Waves Radio. Also, we'll, we have our ACP hour every Thursday at 10 a.m. in the morning. So ACP will resume full activities from the 9th of February, 2023. Oh, no, 9th of January. <laughs> I'm sure everybody will be like, what? Okay, it's not 9th of February, 9th of January. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, I think a couple of questions have dropped while I was commenting on Facebook. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. All right. Um, I think we've answered this one. Yeah. Okay, we have a question. Yeah, we mm. Um, she's saying that uh, is the warming every three months, or six months. Okay, so the warming is every six months. What is every six months? Okay, I think our echo is back. I think our echo is back. Okay, so the one means every six months, and only for those who are living in places like Nigeria or where we call warm endemic uh, areas. So, because I know some of you who are listening to us are in maybe US, UK, and some of your you notice that some of your uh, doctors said they don't recommend that you do warm. And some parents also in Lekki and all the VI people, are, some of the doctors don't recommend they do warm their children because they don't um, they don't think that you really need it per se. So uh, WHO recommends, um, you know, what we call prophylactic deworming, like deworming even when you don't know whether your child has warm or not. Uh, from the age of one year, for people who live in warm endemic area, Nigeria is one of them, and you're supposed to do it every six months, okay? So, and there are a lot of warm expellers you can use. There's combantrine, there's abendazole, you can use any of them. The most important thing is that when you use it now, the next thing you're going to do it will be in six months. And the aim is so that we get rid of all the eggs and the cysts and any worms that are in the, um, that are, uh, with the, that are inside the guts of the children, and that will, you know, reduce the uh, what's it called the the tendency for children to become malnourished due to the worms, you know, eating all their food and all that. So that is why, and it's every six months, not every three months. Okay. 
Uh, right. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, I'm not sure I see any questions. If you have not missed any, all right. Okay, so while we're waiting for more questions to drop, let me just again welcome everybody to 2023. And we're looking forward to this year being an amazing year and a healthy one for our children. So again, just to remind us of all those key things that will keep our children healthy, uh, what we call the child over strategies. Uh, I'm not going to take them in any particular order, but I'm just going to mention them uh, one after the other. Number one, exclusive breastfeeding is a child's over strategy. So we will keep on shouting and screaming it. And of course, in August, we always celebrate God Breastfeeding Week. So exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of life has been proven to keep our children healthy. So you don't want to be seeing the pediatricians often in 2023. Please, for the first six months of life, let's breastfeed our babies exclusively. And it doesn't cost us anything. Just the breast milk is there. Let's just give it to the children. And when we say exclusive breastfeeding, we mean breastfeeding only, no water, okay? A lot of Nigerian mothers breastfeed, but we don't do it exclusively because we give water, we give formula, and that changes the equation. We want it to be breast milk and breast milk only. So for the first six months of life, if you have a newborn baby less than six months, please breastfeed only for the first six months of life. And of course, after six months, it's uh, complementary feeding. Let's get it right in 2023. Food is so important. Food, very, very important because children need to eat the right food to have energy. They need food so that they can grow. They need food so that their immune system can, you know, fight infections and, you know, so that that will keep them healthy. So it's not all the time you have to come to the hospital. The body system will fight most of the infection if our children are well nourished already and that is why we monitor the weights and the growth of our children so anytime you step into the hospital this year for any reason please make sure they weigh your child it doesn't matter whether they weigh the child yesterday or not anytime you step into the hospital the child must be weighed and they must tell you whether that weight is okay or not and of course if you want to know whether it's okay there are many ways you can know and atp has written a lot about that we've talked a lot about that there are apps now that you can use to check whether a baby's weight is age appropriate or not so make sure you're feeding your children well good nutrition it's not just carbohydrates. And let's do, let's take away all the junk food. Let's give them a lot of fruits and vegetables, a proteinous food, carbohydrates. Let's make sure we mix it together. I'm sure we'll talk a lot more about it subsequently in the new year. But let's make sure we feed our children well. Let's make sure they are gaining weight well. So that is number two and three. Uh, so first is I've talked about breastfeeding. I've talked about com uh, good nutrition. I've talked about growth monitoring. Of course, immunization. Please, let's make sure our children are immunized. So immunization needs to protect them against those killer diseases. And our immunization uh, schedule, even in Nigeria, is expanding day by day. We thank God for that. So please our role. Immunization, uh, the vaccines are not cheap, all right? They are not cheap. The government paid a lot for them. And yet they are offering it to us for free. So the only role we have to do as mothers is to take our children for this immunization. Please, let's not forget, if you mix any, you can always go and catch up. So now we have rotaviruses back. We now have rotavirus in many hospitals. We have our uh, uh, Penta. We have all the various vaccines. Please, let's make sure that we give our children all these vaccines in 2023. The vaccines ensure that the children do not have to have this infection. So they don't have to have measles, they don't have to have yellow fever, they don't have to have um, some of these uh, pneumonias and meningitis, some of these very terrible diseases that are very difficult to treat that can kill children. If we can only ensure that our children are immunized, then the children are not going to have those diseases. So please, 
let's make sure we don't mix all the immunization schedule for our children in 2023. And if you've mixed any, make sure that you go collect them now. So that is number, number four. Hygiene, number five. Good hygiene is very important when it comes to the health of our children. So let's make sure we encourage our children to wash their hands with soap and water. There's nothing wrong with children playing with sand or playing around, but let's make sure that they have their baths regularly. They wash their hands with soap and water. They brush their teeth. Let's make sure the environment is clean. You know, let's make sure that if we have bushes or all this stagnant water around our houses, we'll clear them. I know we don't longer do environmental sanitation in Nigeria, but do it for yourself. It's not about the government making it a law. It's about making sure that your house is protected. If you live in an area where there are a lot of mosquitoes, make sure that the children sleep under long-lasting insecticide check nets. Or make sure you also fumigate or flee the house regularly. That will keep the mosquitoes away. <laughs> and that will ensure that our children don't tend to have malaria often. Another very important child uh, of our strategy is family planning. So please, mothers, let's go for family planning. If you don't want to have a baby yet, please don't assume it's never going to happen. You know, so make sure you protect yourself. All right. And there are lots of options. There are injections. There are implants. There are options we can use. When we separate, you know, it's not good for us to be getting pregnant every year. Uh, you need to recover yourself. It's not only for yourself, also for the new baby. When you are not fully recovered and you get pregnant again, then you put that baby at risk of being born premature, of having low blood levels, and so many things can go wrong. So we want you to space the pregnancy by at least two years. So uh, family planning is very key. It's part of child survival strategy so that you're also strong and uh, healthy enough to take care of the ones you already have and before you can you know, take care of the ones that are coming away. So if you're not planning to get pregnant in 2023, please go for family planning. There are a lot of family planning uh, providers in general hospitals, in teaching hospitals. Go to any of those family planning clinics, talk to them. There are options. So you they will discuss with you based on your own body type, based on your own health history. They will be able to recommend what is best for you. So please don't uh, mix that. So of course, female education, I believe anybody who is listening to me is educated. Um, but for those who live in, con in part of the world where girls are not being encouraged. Let's make sure we encourage. Uh, it has been found, research has shown that children of mothers who are educated, they are elder, they tend to do much better than children of mothers who don't have at least secondary school education. So we want our girls to be educated. So those are the, of course, make sure you have a home. The common uh, first aid box, you must know, as you know, mothers as mothers or fathers were the first doctors for our children. So this, let's make sure we always have the first aid and things like uh, ORS, we should always have it at home. So if your child is having diarrhea, you know how to make ORS and you give it to them. Since like for some of your child has fever, you can give them. So let's also train ourselves in first aid. There are lots of uh, online first aid courses that we can attend, or you can just be listening to ATP or join our Facebook group. You also learn all these first aid uh, strategies so that when there's something, you know what to do and you can quickly do it before, of course, you go to the hospital. And of course, if, there's, if our children are sick, let's not waste time. Let's make sure we take them to the hospital on time because doctors are not God and we only do our best. It's only God that heals. But if you come to us on time, you increase our chances of you know fixing it. But if you come up to us too late, sometimes it's just too late and we can't do anything. So let's make sure that we promote good health first. We don't want the children to be sick. That's our goal. But so we, that's why we do all the, all this talk, all this uh, program we are having online is to make sure we prevent infection. I mean, the diseases in the first place, but when they happen, please let's go to the hospital on time and let's see our doctors on time. All right. I think I've mentioned most of the child survivor strategies. And uh, if I remember anyone, how had it before we go? Uh, let us round up. I think our time is almost up. 
Um, okay, we just have a few more questions and we're going to close for the day. Thank you so much. Uh, Esther, do you want to? Uh, Esther, do you want to read? Yeah, thank you so much. Ra. And this is coming from Bint Ahmed, and she's saying that is it normal for nine months not to have teeth? And thanks for your response on my first question. Yeah, you're welcome, Mimi. Now it, it is perfectly normal for a baby not to have teeth at nine months. Some don't even have it until one year, so it's nothing to worry about. Some babies, their first teeth are going to come out at the age of. 18 months. So you but you please see the dentist at the age of one year because they just want to see you first at that time. But nothing to worry about. All right. Um from Tonya, she's saying good morning, doctor. What could free cools of blood on baby's poop mean? All right. Uh thank you, All Tonya. Right. Thank you. Um we don't want to see blood in the baby's stool at all. That is alarming to the pediatrician. So it could be the blood is coming from the outside, you know, like maybe there's a wound around the anus where the stool is coming out from. If that is the case, then we just need to treat that wound. Or it could mean that there is, child is bleeding somewhere along the intestinal tract. So whichever case, any blood in the stool is an hospital case you got to go to the hospital immediately because we need to figure out how, where that blood is coming from. And if it's from outside, we can see it, then fine. We just need to, if it's an infection, we need to treat that. If there's something else, if the child is bleeding somewhere, we need to know where the child is bleeding from and we need to fix it. Uh, sometimes it could be um, dysentery, but that would, that would be blood and what would look like diarrhea stool, not normal stool. So if it's a blood with normal stool, you are not really very sure. You share blood on the poo. So I'm assuming the poo is normal and it's just blood. So that gives us a bleeding scenario more. But if it's watery stool with blood, then that is dysentery. And that could be an infection. Again, the child needs to be treated. So this child needs to see a doctor. Number one, we need to confirm that what you saw on the stool is actually blood. There's a way we test the stool for blood. And if we confirm it is blood, we need to know where or why the blood is there. And we need to treat it immediately. All right. Okay. Let's, our time is up. Okay. So it's water stool. Okay. If it's water stool, that is this century. Um, then you need to go to the hospital. In the child, we need antibiotics. Um, you give ORS and go to the hospital. Your child will need antibiotics for this century, yeah. Okay, um, coming from Deborah, she's saying that, Ma, what else can I use to clean my baby's body? <coughs> it's quite good to breast milk. I've used cutting wool with warm water, but it's still the same. That's all you need to do. Just use cloths, uh, like a, a face towel with water and just clean the tongue. You know, it's nothing else you're going to use. And you do it every day. You know, you don't just do it once and for all. You have, if you do it every day to clean out. If you are cleaning it and it's not going, then we need to be sure it is not, it is breast milk because baby could have what we call um, uh, aura, aura candidiasis or thrush, aura thrush. And aura thrush will make your baby's tongue and mouth to be whitish and it will not easily clean if you clean it. And that is a sign of an infection, which is fungal infection. But if it is milk, if you clean it, it will come out easily and it will not be an issue. So you need to be you need to be sure you are dealing with milk. But we don't recommend cutting wool because the children can easily swallow it, can get lost into so use face towel dedicated for cleaning the mouth and ordinary warm water. Please don't use glycerin, don't use tomato, don't use what else they recommend for you. The dentists don't want you to use that. All we want you to use is clean water and <clears throat> um, uh, face towel and it will clean. If it's not cleaning, we need to be sure it's not something else and we need to fix it. All right. So let's quickly answer the last set of questions in the last one minute I have before Fresh Waves bounce us off the studio. Um, all right. I think I saw. Yeah, somebody said my five months old doesn't suck like she used to. Like twice a day. Twice a day is too small for a five month old. The weight is fine. The weight is seven kilos, but I'm really worried about a five month old who is not sucking, who is only sucking twice a day. Your baby should be sucking at least every three to four hours. So, reduction in sucking, or what we call poor suck, 
could be a sign of an illness. And sometimes for children, that's the first sign that they are sick and you need to take them to the hospital. Okay, yeah, it's the same question. All right, thank God, it's the same question. Yeah, so tell me if your baby is not sucking and you are not giving other food because if your baby is also on, um, if you are started giving mixed food, in other words, you are giving formula, some of you, because you give too much formula, then the child doesn't need to suck because they already get enough food. So if you are doing exclusive breastfeeding and your baby is only sucking twice a day, I will worry about that. You need to go to the hospital. But if you are doing misfeeding, in the bit that the baby is not, uh, maybe it's now having what we call nipple confusion, and maybe just getting enough food through the bottle and doesn't want to take breast milk, which is not what we recommend. So you have to know which one is the, okay. Yeah, if she's on exclusive, thank you for quickly coming back with me on that. If it's on exclusive and she's reducing to feed, I will worry about it. So you, can you see a pediatrician quickly? Let's be sure why it may be a sign the child is ill, especially if it's something new, something recent. You know, normally baby should suck at least not less than three to four hours every day. So twice a day would never be enough for a five month old. When you'll be six months, you can start complimentary feeding, but you'll be just still need to skip sucking. So um all right thank you so much i can see that our time is up we need to go now thank you so much everyone for joining us and i'll see you again next week uh, by god's grace bye yeah, thank you very much <laughs> all right <laughs> bye our time is up <laughs> bye bye see you all guys have a wonderful new year bye